Jay Hanks for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, we are going to talk about how to attach a mask to a tracking point. All right, so let's say, for example, I have this raw footage of my street. It's handheld footage moving around a little bit, and I have this um, stock footage from Production Crate of this tank rolling by and I want to combine them so that they are together. First thing I'm going to do is uh, change my workspace to compositing. And then uh, what I will do is I will use the media here and I will drag this raw footage into a composite shot so I have this. And basically I want the tank to cross here over the screen. So if I bring in the tank footage uh, and I play it, and you can see how this is moving here, right? Um, but the problem is, is that the mailbox is in the way, right? So uh, I'm just going to make a little bit of adjustments here. Okay, so now I have this situation where the tank is going to roll across and in front, but I need the mailbox to, um, you know, be masked out. Now the situation here is that if I were to mask this mailbox, uh, then it would, I would have to go through and manually adjust that. So is there a way where I could track the mailbox and then apply uh, or attach that mask to the track? And the answer is no, you can't do that. But you can do something that basically accomplishes the same thing. So let's get into it. The first thing we want to do is track the mailbox. So uh, I'm going to open up the raw footage and click the little plus icon next to tracks. This will bring up my tracker. Also puts me in the layer tab. Um, because there is enough rotational factor here in the raw footage, I'm going to go ahead and make this a double point track. Uh, but that wouldn't always be necessary. And I'm going to take my first point and I will put it here on the top um of the mailbox and i will just track a very nice solid feature there um and then i'm going to take my second point and i think i will put it further down say for example here and this is pretty good quality footage and it is a pretty uh you know there's not a lot of motion blurred stuff so it should have a really solid track i would be stunned if it didn't and it does uh, so now what I'm going to do is uh, click on rotation and might as well click on scale, although I didn't move when I filmed this. And I'm going to transform this. Let me uh, go back to the viewer tab and let me add a point. <clears throat> and this point will be the track point. So I'm just going to rename it track point using the F2 key. Uh, I will click back on the tracker and purpose transform layer will be the track point and click apply. So now you can see that if I uh, have that assigned here, and I'm going to turn off the show mo motion path, you can see, though, that that is now tracking very nicely with that point. Okay, let me turn off the tank footage here for just a second. So that looks very, very solid. So now all I need to do is mask this out and then figure out how to attach that to that point. Again, like I said, you can't actually attach a mask to a track point or parent a mask, but you can do something, and this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to create a new plane layer, and it can be any color. I'm going to make it white just because um, it will be easier to see, okay, and click OK. Uh, under that, I will go ahead and just take the opacity down so that um, I can see the footage underneath it. and. Also, because the footage is moving and because this is near the edge, I'm a little concerned that it may come up and the edge will be uh, of the plane will be revealed. So I'm just going to scale this up maybe 115%, just enough so that it, if it, when it moves, it won't come off. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to attach this plane to the track point. So that way it's moving, right? The plane itself is. Um, and if it um, does um, move enough, it might come off and then my mask won't be complete. So what I want to do is just um, I'm making it big enough before I start masking. All right now I'm going to use the freehand mask tool and I am going to go ahead and start masking this out. Okay. 
Okay, so I have very carefully masked this um, mailbox out, but I have done that on the plane itself. Okay, so now if I go ahead and up the opacity, you can see that I have masked it out on the plane, not on the mailbox. Uh, but because I have parented the plane to the track, you can see that it is sticking to essentially where that mailbox is was that now if this was moving around maybe as a tree limb in, in you know in the wind or uh, a person that was moving a little bit then i might have to do some keyframing of that but basically the bulk of the work is being done in the fact that it's been tracked okay so now the question is how do i now apply this mask to the actual mailbox and the footage itself. All right, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this plane and put it on the bottom of the layer stack. Uh, I'm going to right-click on the raw footage and make a duplicate of it. I can also use the hotkey Control D. And I'm just going to rename this mailbox, okay? And then I can go ahead and rename the raw footage uh, as the background, okay? Now, of course, the mailbox will want to be in front of the tank footage, uh, so that way it will cross in front. All right. Now, what has to happen is, is that I need to apply an effect. So if I open it up and go under effects and search for the set matte effect, I can apply this and I can source that mat below. The problem here that I'm going to have is if I did that, source that plane, it's going to source the entire plane because when you use this effect, it sources the plane before any masks or effects are applied to it. So what I need to do is bake in those effects, in this case, just the mask, before that happens. There's a couple of ways of doing that. One way would be to right click on this and make it into a composite shot and then source the composite shot. Another way to do it, and that's what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to use a grade layer. I'm going to place the grade layer above the plane. And then I am going to just rename that grade layer as matte. So it's very simple. And then when I open this back up, instead of sourcing the plane, I will source the matte. And so now that is in front of it. Oh, you know what I want to do is up the opacity 100%. So now you can see that I have essentially masked out this and I have attached it to a track point, which is now um, being used as a mat for a set mat effect. So essentially I'm doing the same thing. Um, now the value here, there's a couple of things that are important to see and these are really nice. One is, is that right now, since the footage is moving around, the tank itself is not matching that. But man, it makes it real easy because I can just parent that tank directly to the same track point, And now it is locked into um, the same movement as the mailbox and the background footage and everything else. So now it looks like it's really integrated into the scene. The other thing is, though, is that because I am using a set mat effect, I can make adjustments to the plane uh, and it can... Um, it actually makes it more flexible than if I was using a mask, okay? Plus, I can actually still do all the things that I could do with a mask. So, for example, if I wanted to feather the mask, I could feather the mask. Uh, if I wanted to, um, you know, have a expansion or a contraction of the mask, I could do that, right? Uh, but also, I can use a matte cleaner effect and clean this up a little bit. Uh, of course, I can put a light wrap effect on the um, actual mailbox and then source the um, tank footage so that it looks like it fits more into the scene. And I, there's a lot of things that I can do here that I wouldn't be able to do if I just had a simple mask that was somehow attached. So in review, you can attach a, mat, a, a mask to a track point, but only if you do this little cheat effect, which is where you put the mask itself on the plane and then use the plane as a mat for a set mat effect. Of course, it has to be baked in like I did using either a grade layer or 
by making this into its own composite shot. But either way, that is how you accomplish this idea. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this kind of content, do me a favor and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the little bell icon for notifications. Please feel free to share it with your friends. And as always, thanks for watching.